Hey guys, I've uh, got another project in mind. It's uh, going to be something of a copy actually from something I saw today. It, there's a website, handytools.com, oh no, dot net, I think it is, handytools.net. And there's some guys on there who come up with some very nice ideas. Um, this one appealed to me because uh, I want to get some more options for fixing materials on the mill. And I'll insert a picture at some point. There's a picture the guy published. Um, sorry if this is a bit muffled, but uh, I'm just doing a quick voiceover on here. This is a picture of the units that this other guy made, which I'm hoping to more or less copy. We've got the sort of brass buttons, which I'm calling them, and uh, double length T-nuts with a means of locking into the bed and then the uh, cap screw in the buttons is turned eccentric on the head so that you can get a cam operation. I'll show you the picture again later anyway. But I'm just introducing this at the moment with regard to materials. <laughs> um, what he made was basically one double T-nut right so if you imagine that but considerably shorter and that's going to be made out of this bar fortunately I've got a piece of three quarter 516 so I'll we'll have a bit of milling to do to uh, make prepare that to make these double T nuts and then the other thing he used was some inch brass rod uh, I'm pretty short on brass but fortunately I, I one of my other projects, I'm trying to think which it was now, I turned the thread off a piece of brass, a bit like this. This is out of a very, very old large gate valve. I mean, large, <laughs> I should say. Um, it's got a... It's got this chunk of brass on the end. This big square thread. And the uh, piece itself... It's pretty huge. Uh, the problem is setting it up. It's too fat here to go through the spindle. So what I'm going to have to do, I think, is to cut off this square, get rid of that, then I can chuck it here, and it has what I'm hoping is a sufficiently accurate center, so I can put the live center in there, and then We'll turn down the thread and get down to one inch nominal and then make discs. Not quite sure of the thickness yet, they'll probably be about... Let me just check something here, I'm telling you how thick they're going to be. Because I've got a cap screw here. Uh, that's 300. So they're probably going to be probably about 400 deep. Maybe not as thin as I'd like. I may actually change the cap screws we're going to use. But anyway, this is just an intro, because this is the stage of saying, what have I got? <laughs> Which is the usual. So, uh, in the meantime, before I get any further, and there may be a significant pause here, <clears throat> whilst the temperature goes down to I don't know how low, like minus 10, and it's just not worth even trying to heat out here then. So I'm going to get this turned down and uh, we'll set up for some milling on the steel and I'll describe more about it as we go along. Well, I got that cut off, and uh, we should be able to get this into the, uh, the three jaw probably will do. See if we can set it up, and then I can get the uh, thread cut off down here. There we are. We're set up in there. <clears throat> we got um, got the center in. Seems to run fairly well.
I don't think it was ever actually quite a precision piece, a bit of out of centre on that. I doubt if that's very uh, precise. Okay, we've taken this down quite a long way. I've got cloths everywhere, of course. Uh, I try and keep my chips, and, and even so, they go everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. And uh, because I've got cloths all over the place, I'm doing manual feed. I don't want to get tangled up in the uh, feed shaft. So I'm taking another 25, which will just leave me, I don't know, about 5 or 10 left. left. I should think probably, just at a rough estimate, probably about five or ten. Probably a little bit more actually. Let's try and uh, get an accurate measurement. Yeah, it could be as much as 20,000. Anyway, we'll finish taking that down. I'm going to try an Adam Booth angle here. I'm mounted up on the uh, compound. Let's see if the camera will handle the movement. And this should be the last main cut. The piece wasn't running totally true, although I've got the centre in. No, uh, I've got too much vibration, that's a pity. Too much vibration. I need a large monarch lathe, don't I, to do that. Let's put the camera somewhere else. Okay, this is a, <laughs> a bit of an experimental angle. I'm perched in a very weird position. I'm just going to see how it goes on this uh, finishing cut. See how that comes out. Very close to the work, but uh, worth seeing what the camera can manage. Right, <clears throat> let's come back to something a little bit less extreme. Now I've got to uh, try and gather up all my brass chips now. You can't even see half of the cloth that I've got here. Quite a lot of chips. Anyway, that's not bad. Not too bad at all. That'll give us a starting point for the uh, discs I've got to make. Well, there's more than one use for a Harbour Freight catalogue flyer. <laughs> yeah, look at that load of chips there. I still keep my uh, brass chips, whether I'm going to use them for a major brazing job or just finish up with a whole lot and melt it down and cast something. Anyway, that's the um, that's where we've got to at the moment. Anyway, there it is. I've got to work on from that at another time and uh, see where we go. Well, it's another day. I've just had the uh, heater going, which has pushed the temperature up to a balmy 40 degrees. It's almost into negative outside, and tonight I think we're getting about minus 10, so 
I'm not going to be out here very long, but before I take this out, and I'm going to put the hacksaw, the bandsaw through that, just to get my one inch slug, in fact it's a bit under. But I'm just going to take a final skim cut on there just to clean it up slightly more. Okay, that's nice, I like that. That's a good old piece of HSS with a nice radius on it. So, here are, how's that for steam? <laughs> I'm not even smoking my pipe. There you go. <laughs> it's, I say that's the balmy 40 degrees. So I'm going to take this out, go and cut it off, and then I can chuck it. Um, I might just introduce that picture again when I put the video together just to show you what this guy did with his brass uh, because we're going to take probably only six pieces off this. Right, I've uh, cut this off. I've left out something like I'm hoping not to have to move it again actually. I've left out three and a quarter and allowing for parting off I'm after one, two, three, four, five, six and if this is rigid enough well I can probably put a centre in when I part off but I've got to bore this out uh, clearance for the uh, clearance for an 8mm and then each of the discs will be uh, put a mill down there to recess for the head, which we've for the head there, which we've got to uh, machine that eccentric. We'll come to that later. So I'm just going to face this off. nearly there I'm just uh, just checking to see it cut fairly square but it was an awkward piece to set up uh, still a tiny bit there missing I'm only taking tiny cuts because I don't want to lose too much of it So I think that should, yeah, that's better. So we're really ready to do some uh, boring on this and get a clearance hole through. Right, we'll just get the centre drill in here.
right, that's uh, given that a start. And I'll get a drill set up. One thing I forgot to mention, this uh, this old chuck, despite having done work on it, it's still not brilliant. The jaws are not very good. I'm going to have to do some more work on it. Try and get it running a bit better. This has probably got to run out of two or three thou at the end, which does not please me, but I can't get much better. But uh, this is not critical for that, fortunately. Using a bit of lube now. Going in this deep, I've got to keep clearing it. And then it starts squeaking. Take one more pass there, try and get nearly three inches. Right, the whole fluted area of that drill is nominally three inch, so uh, <coughs> and that'll do me to get down to, it'll give me more than enough actually. There you are, look at all my lovely chips. Okay, the wind's howling again. I think I might just put a, in readiness for the first part off, I might just put a slight, uh, if I can find the centre, I might just put a slight chamfer. Let's put this big, uh, put this big centre in, which you can't see because it's off camera. I'm staying in fairly tight. It's a new camera position I'm messing around with. That's enough just to uh, give me something for the centre when I do some parting. Whether I'm going to do that now, I'm not sure. Seeing as having got it up to 42 degrees, it's now back down to 31.8. Bit of a devil, isn't it? The thing is, although I've got some insulation in two windows, the windows are not exactly draft proof. And I can feel the heat being sucked out, so I think I'm going to probably call it a day and I'll be back in about a second, which may be one day or two. <laughs> I'm not sure.